Good back there. Just making sure. Okay. First coach of the afternoon is our first coach from one of our new member universities, Vic Schaefer. Vic is in his fifth year as a head coach at the University of Texas. His 40th year of coaching is 20th as a head coach. So Vic and I have intersected all along our career journeys. We first met when he was the head coach at Sam Houston State University, literally driving the van for his team back then. Um, lived that life for a while. He moved to Arkansas to work with Gary Blair as an assistant coach, was at Texas A&M. Then we reintroduced ourselves. I guess it was at the uh, celebration event when we added A&M and he moved to Mississippi State where he coached for eight years leading his team to two Final Fours. Today, October 16th, this is his 31st wedding anniversary. So I knew I knew Vic when he was the head coach at Sam Houston State and his wife was an assistant coach, Holly, at the University of Texas at Arlington. At his wedding, I'm reading, he sang, all my exes live in Texas, so you can ask about that. And Vic and I actually don't know this until I read this right now. He runs regularly and I got my four miles in this morning as well. So the University of Texas head women's basketball coach, Vic Schaefer. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we have known each other a long time, and uh, we've obviously, in our career paths, have uh, come a long way, I think, uh, be a, the, as the old saying goes. So uh, I'm excited about it, the opportunity to be here today as the head coach at the University of Texas, and excited to have Rory Harmon and Madison Booker with me, two outstanding young ladies that uh, are not only great players, but are two tremendous young ladies. So we're excited to be a part of this conference. I'm very familiar with the conference, obviously. And uh, as I've spent six years in assistant at Arkansas in it and eight years as head coach at Mississippi State. So uh, back in some familiar stomping grounds. I don't know how this is supposed to run. Am I supposed to let you? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go to some questions. All right. Uh, raise your hand and please remember to identify yourself uh, and the outlet you represent when you ask your question. Let's just start on the third row, far right. Hey, uh, Ethan Weston and Whole Hog Sports. Is this on? Yes. Um, hey, Ethan. You know, mentioned the Gary Blair tree. It reaches across this conference. What's it like, you know, going arena to arena, and a lot of times you'll face – uh, you know, coaches that, that kind of come from that same tree and upbringing and their coaching? Well, yeah, Coach, um, you know, I was with him 15 years, and he's had several assistants throughout the throughout his career. And, uh, you know, there's a there's several of us out there that are still doing it and still, still in this great game. And, um, you know, I think, again, Coach and I, we were together a long time, won a lot of games together. We had some great, great experiences together, both at Arkansas and at A&M. And um, he's so special to me. Uh, I learned, you know, being with him 15 years, he's a seven or eight time Hall of Famer. I mean, shame on you if you don't learn anything being around him. And um, I learned so many valuable lessons that, you know, uh, have allowed me to have any, any of the success that I've had. And um, so it's, it's pretty special. You know, I think as a head coach now, I, I try to do some of those same things and mentor and, and develop coaches. Uh, I've had four former players on my staff forever. This year I only have two, but uh, for the last four, five, six years, I've had four former players on my staff, just trying to give them an opportunity to get in the game. And because I think that's, that's our job, you know, as part of what we do as head coaches. and. Um, certainly coach was, um, did that as well. So, you know, he's, uh, I still talk to him regularly. Um, he's somebody that I love dearly. And, um, again, he's somebody that I really appreciate. I'll tell you this about Coach Blair, nobody knows the history of our game or appreciates the history of our game more than that man. And he is, uh, He's just, he's made an unbelievable impact in my life and I'm forever grateful. Next question, front row on the end. Thank you. Uh, John Zeno with Associated Press. Um, 
and John. I mean, first off, we know the league got stronger in women's basketball with you guys in Oklahoma joining, but how much has, it, has women's basketball in SC evolved since you started as an, as an assistant and even since Mississippi State? Well, you know, you have to remember when I got in the league, you had powerhouses. You know, Pat Summit's teams were Georgia with Coach Landers. Um, you know, Joe Champy was finishing up his career and had some great teams at Auburn. Um, it was a monster league then. And as a young coach, I can remember sitting courtside at SEC tournaments, scouting and going, and, and that's when you really, as, a, as an assistant, you, you sit there and go, well, when I become a head coach, I want my team to look like that team. I want my team to play like that team. And so I really have tried to, you know, throughout the course of that time, you know, you go from 97, 98, my first year at Arkansas, we finished sixth and we made it to the final four, you know, um, in the, to where we are today. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a different time and a different day, but I, I think it's, you know, the parity that we have in our league right now is really incredible. Back then you had some really dominant teams and then, you had some some teams that that maybe weren't you know they couldn't beat those top teams. I think in our league right now, you've got on any given night, if you're not ready to play, you won't get beat. You'll get embarrassed, and so I think that's where the the credibility of our league is. Tremendous coaches, Hall of Fame coaches. You got future WNBA players, night in and night out, um, and so I think the you know leaving the league that I just left to come to this one, all I did was jumped out of the frying pan and into the grease. So it's, uh, it's just a, you know, it's a monster. And I think you've got to prepare for that. And I think that's why our conference and our coaches are so adamant about staying at 16 games because our league is that good. And, and yet every year we still have a large amount of teams making the NCAA tournament because of that. So. It's a, you know, it's a challenge night in and night out. But I think I've seen a, I've I've been able to see front row an evolution of a of a conference. And again, I think the parity is what really separates us right now. Uh, we have another question on the front row. Hey, Coach AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see it, Coach, what have you not seen from Madison Booker yet? And uh, you're welcoming back Rory. What would she bring to this team? Yeah. You know, I, I think last year I saw a little bit of everything from Madison. Um, you know, as a freshman, as a young player, early in her career, having that will be blanket in, in Rory Harmon, who's your point guard, running your team. And, and I said this earlier, I thought, I thought, Rory was really, really good last year, was on pace to have a first-team All-American season as well. But I thought she created, Madison created a lot of opportunities for Rory. And, and of course, Rory being the point guard, she creates opportunities for everybody. And uh, then when Rory went down, most of the time, y'all, in basketball, when your point guard goes down, your two guard is who you might lean on. We went to our three player in Madison, but I knew after recruiting Madison her entire high school career and knowing my team that I had last year, Madison Booker was the answer. It wasn't a tryout. That's who was gonna be our point guard. And while we had some bumps in the road uh, along the way early, the kid has so much presence for such a young player. She had tremendous uh, presence on the floor. She, nothing rattled her. Uh, her first three or four minutes in that very first game against Baylor when we only had three days to get ready, that was the worst of the worst. After that, I took her out. And then when we put her back in, I never saw that again. Just, just, she was just, she was really ready to embrace the role that she was in and so, you have to give the kid a ton of credit. Uh, what she was able to do leading that team, that team won 33 games in the history of Texas women's basketball. They've only won more games one time 
and that's when they won the national championship in 1986, and they were 34-0. But that team would not have been that if it hadn't have been for Madison Booker embracing being the point guard. So now you fast forward to where we are now. Madison Booker, there's nobody more excited on our team that Rory Harmon's back than Madison Booker because she wants to go over there and get on the wing uh, where she's really comfortable. And um, I just think that it allows us as a team, we've got a lot of flexibility there. Um, and we, we have a special freshman in Brianna Preston um, who's going to be an unbelievable point guard for us. But Rory just... <sighs> R Rory's presence, how hard she plays, the energy that she plays with permeates through my team every day, every game. And uh, I think she really is a settling influence on my entire team, and it gives my team a lot of confidence. And I know this, it gives her head coach a lot of confidence to know that we have her back on the floor leading our team and um, and so it's a it's a really good feeling to know we've got great guard play. You win with guard play in basketball. You have no you can have all the size you want in the world, but if you don't have guard play, you got no chance. We've got guard play this year, and I've got depth at guard play um, with with Bree and and uh, Jordan Lee, two exceptional freshmen. Layla Filia, y'all, is a monster. She's going to be so good. Shay Holly's been the glue to my, my program for the last few years. So I just named off five, six guards that they're all going to play every night and they're going to play a lot and they're all going to impact our, our team. And so uh, I think our, our team, our future is in really good shape at, at, at the guard spot and this year's team we finally have some depth. I just haven't had it the last couple of years and give those teams credit. They've learned how to stay out of foul trouble and play, play through some, some issues. But this year's team, we finally have depth. Other questions for yes, sir. Coach? Raise your hand. All right, let's go to the fourth row in the middle. Wilton Jackson, the next. Uh, Coach, you kind of just alluded to it when you were talking about Layla Filia. Um, where do you envision her impact um, on your team this, this season? Well, um, Layla, Layla is, is really, um, she's perfect for how we, we, we want to play, how I like to play. She's a great teammate. She's a great kid. Um, she's tough and competitive. Um, Man, I, I would have loved to have had her for, for four years. You know, I'm blessed to get her for one year. But she just brings so much to the table. She's, she's, um, she's really an aggressive offensive player. She cares defensively. She's trying to learn a new system, you know, get a crash course in that. Um, she's had some injuries this summer, which have kind of slowed her. But she's finally healthy and has really looked. Man, this last week, she's looked really good like a million dollars I and mean, she really looks good and I've even played her at some points um, um, because she is really good reading reading ball screen defense so she brings a lot to the table and you know she's she can score at all three levels she's smart she's heady she sees the floor extremely well um, she's going to be a great compliment to my other guards but she and along with Shay that's two veterans two seniors you know, we lose Shaley Gonzalez, and those two I can plug in. One of them's going to start, and one of them's going to be six, have a chance to be sixth player of the year because they're that good. And um, that's a great, great, um, it's not a problem. I hate to say that, you know, it's not a problem. It's a great thing to have. And so, uh, again, excited about the opportunity to coach her. And again, she's a great kid, man. She's just really, really a perfect fit for us. Other questions for Coach, if you raise your hand. All right, let's go to the fourth row on the left, and then we're going to come down to the middle second row right here. Vic, Jared Redding, 24-7 Sports. Hey, Jared. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your last year or second to last year at Mississippi State was Coach Yo's first year at Ole Miss. And, you know, obviously, considering where Ole Miss's program was at that time and then now three consecutive top four finishes in the SEC, is it any surprise, you know, to see her turn it around as fast as she did and to where it is now? 
Well, I, I think you said it. I mean, where they are today and where they were then is way different. You know, and I haven't been in the league since then, and I've had my own problems and uh, concerns in my own league that I was in to kind of, and I haven't paid that much attention. So uh, I know that she was very successful where she was before she went to, to Mississippi. And uh, so I, I, it, does it surprise me? No, she was very successful where she was. And um, I think that obviously when you finish in the top four or three years in a row in this league, you're doing something. And, uh, and so again, it, the bottom line is it all comes down to recruiting, you know, for all of us. And uh, I think she's done a great job. And, and again, we all recruit to a fit. And I think she's done a great job. You know, the secret to our success has been recruiting to a fit, retaining our student athletes and developing them. And um, over the course of time, we've been pretty successful in all three of those phases. So for her, it, it, it doesn't surprise me at all. And certainly happy for her. I know, I know that blood feud in that conference, in that, in that state. And I know how, uh, how that is. And, uh, you know, I lived it uh, for eight years. And um, there's no middle ground. And I know the competition and the competitive spirit that, that she has as well as uh, Sam now we had when I was there. Uh, it's really special. So I'm, I'm really happy for her and her staff. And again, that's what happens when you work hard and, and you have a plan. Next question, second row in the middle. Hi, Vic. Kevin Skarbinski from the SEC blog. Hey, Kevin. Uh, Johnny Harris talked about you. She said you'll always be like a brother to her and what an influence you were on her career. Is there any surprise to you, I'm guessing not, that Auburn has gotten better year after year after year under her leadership? Yeah, no, it's no surprise. I mean, uh, she was with me, you know, all eight years at, at Mississippi State. And, uh, you know, she's, she's lived it. She's seen it every day. And, and she was a big part of it and big reason why we were able to do what we did. So, you know, when I was recommending her for that job, there was no question in my mind she was ready and she could do it. And she knows what the recipe is when you start interviewing with people and talking to people and you've got to take over. There's nothing harder. And y'all in this room, you either, you should know it if you don't. I don't care what sport it is in the Southeastern Conference. You want to take a daunting task, go take over one of the bottom teams in this league in whatever sports you're going to take over and try to build it and pass people up. It's, it's almost impossible. It's so daunting. And, and so, again, she was a big part of what we did at, at Mississippi State, and it doesn't surprise me that she's been able to do it at Auburn. And I knew she could, I knew she would. And uh, she knows what the recipe is, and I'm certainly um, happy for her. And, and um, so it's, we were together a long time. We had a lot of, we, we had a lot of good times together. Not enough time of the day for me to share them, but we had a lot of good times together. We have time for one more question. Anyone? Okay, let's take it on the second row on the end. Elena Morris, VandySports.com. Uh, you talked about what Madison Booker can do for your team, but she was actually one of the players to receive preseason SEC Player of the Year. What does that say about her um, receiving that recognition in your all first year in the conference? Well, I think it's, it's a lot of respect involved in any time you get a preseason acknowledgement there's a lot of respect for you know for those folks that are voting on that and uh, again her you know it's in the body of work that she did as a freshman and the the accomplishments that she she had and in, in um, what she was able to do with our team the impact that she had on our team after we obviously had a devastating loss in in Rory and so it's to me it's she she'll tell you it's it's what you know I'll say it's well earned, but now you got to go live it, you know. And so, um, you know, her and Rory both received I think preseason uh, uh, all conference recognition. And uh, but I think with with Madison, it's there's a lot of respect for for what she did a year ago across the country. People were able to see her and see the success that she had and in leading our team and again she didn't just get us through a season she she was she didn't just lead us to an okay we were, we were in the elite eight won a conference championship uh, tournament and uh um won 33 games and 
we wouldn't have had anything close to that if it hadn't been her embracing a role that she wasn't, she didn't come to Texas, you know, to be the point guard. And, uh, and yet she was thrown into that role. And man, she just embraced it, ran with it, and did an unbelievable job. So uh, I'm excited for her. I'm excited for our team. And again, it's well, well earned. She's, she's earned that, that respect. And um, again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that I get to look up and see her every day on the basketball court. Another great kid, just tremendous young lady and uh, competitor. Man, she's a competitor. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks for everybody for being here. Appreciate all you do for our great game and for your coverage. All right. Praise the Lord and hook them horns. We'll have Texas and Tennessee players on side podiums momentarily.